Hello there. In this video, we will be learning about one of the applications of dimensional analysis. So, first let's recall the three important applications of dimensional analysis. These are, the first one is to check the consistency of dimensional equation. The second one is to derive the relation between physical quantities in physical phenomenon. And this is the one that we would be discussing in this particular video. The third one is to change the units from one system to another. For an example, one of the unit is given in the SI system and one is given in the CGS system. So how do we change that? That also comes under the applications of dimensional analysis. So before we get on to the applications of dimensional analysis, first let's understand what is dimensional analysis. So the dimensional analysis is a method used in physics and engineering to analyze the relationships between different physical quantities by identifying their dimensions such as length, time, mass, etc. So let's also understand what is the dimensional formula. So you might be aware that force can be represented as m raised to the power 1, l raised to the power 1, t raised to the power negative 2. Now this thing is what is called the dimensional formula for force. So a dimensional formula represents the physical quantity in terms of the fundamental dimensions like mass, length and time. You can see here, I have represented force in the terms of the fundamental physical quantity that is mass, length and time and the exponents are what are called the dimensions. So I can say the dimension of force is 1 in mass, 1 in length and negative 2 in time. So in this particular video, we will be learning how this dimensional formula and in overall sense, how this dimensional analysis can help us to do the real life problems. Particularly, the one that we would be focusing in today's video would be to derive the relationship between physical quantities in physical phenomenon. Now, let's first understand the meaning of the statement to derive the relation between physical quantities in physical phenomenon. Let me take an example of a physical phenomenon where I'm standing here, I have a thread in my hand and I have attached a ball to one end of the thread and I'm making this ball move in a circular motion like this. Let's say R is the radius of this circle, V is the velocity with which this ball is moving and let's say the ball is moving with the help of a force F and also the mass of this ball is M. I'm interested to find how this force is related with velocity, with mass and with this radius. Now this is what is called to derive the relationship between physical quantities. Now these all are the physical quantities, right? Velocity, mass, radius and the force. And we want to understand the relationship between these three quantities with respect to the force. Now let's understand this step by step. The first step is to identify the physical quantities involved. Like in our case, the physical in quantities would be force, radius, mass, velocity. To write the general form of the equation, we'll just understand this with the help of the same example. Then the third step is to express each quantity in the terms of fundamental dimensions. The fourth step is to set up the dimensional equation. And the final step is to solve for the unknown exponents. Let's understand this with the help of this example. For the example that I just shared, so the physical quantities would be force, mass, radius and velocity. So these all are the physical quantities that we have identified. For the second and third step, first we need to write the general form of the equation. So we can simply say, let's say the force is directly proportional to mass raised to the power x, velocity raised to the power y and radius raised to the power z. Because in this particular formula, we don't know how the force is related with mass. Is it directly proportional, inversely proportional? Is it directly proportional to m square, m cube? So we are unaware of this at the moment. So I'm just assuming that let this force be directly proportional to m raised to the power x, v raised to the power y, and r raised to the power z in such a way that x, y, and z are the variables for me at the moment. Now, the next step is to express each quantity in the terms of fundamental dimensions. The dimensions of force is m raised to the power 1, l raised to the power 1, t raised to the power negative 2. The dimension of mass would be simply m raised to the power 1. The dimension of velocity would be l raised to the power 1, t raised to the power negative 1. And the dimension of r that is radius would be l raised to the power 1. Now, 
after doing this, we have to set up the dimensional equation. So I can say that f is equal to k times some constant times m raised to the power x, v raised to the power y and r raised to the power z. Now, the dimensional equation would look something like this. So the dimensional formula for force is m raised to the power 1, l raised to the power 1, t raised to the power negative 2. That would be equal to, now, now k is a constant, it doesn't have any dimension. So the dimension of mass are m, that would be raised to the power x. And the dimension of velocity is l raised to the power 1, t raised to the power negative 1, raised to the power y, and l, that is the dimension of r, raised to the power z. Now this is our dimensional equation, we can further simplify it and I can say m raised to the power 1, l raised to the power 1, t raised to the power negative 2 would be equal to, so here I can say m raised to the power x, I can uh, write this as l raised to the power y plus z and here I can say t raised to the power negative y. Now this is our simplified dimensional equation. In this, x, y and z are our unknown. Now the final step would be to solve for the unknown exponents. So the dimension of mass in this is x. The dimension of mass in the LHS is 1. So you can simply say the value of x would be equal to 1. Now, similarly, the dimension of L is y plus z. But here the dimension of L is 1. So they have to be equal to each other. So I can say y plus z would be equal to 1. So that is one of our equations. And from here, I can say that minus y is equal to minus 2. So minus y is equal to minus 2. That gives us the value of y is equal to 2. Now, we can put this value of y in this equation and we can say 2 plus z equals to 1. So z comes out to be 1 minus 2. That is equal to negative 1. And finally, we can form the equation. So we can say that force is directly proportional to m raised to the power x that is 1, v raised to the power y that is 2 and r raised to the power z that is minus 1. So I can say that f is directly proportional to mv square divided by r. This is the relationship between the mass, velocity, radius and the force. Let's take another example. Let us find out the relationship between energy with mass and c where c is the speed of light so we'll use the same steps first we'll say energy is directly proportional to mass raised to the power x and c raised to the power y so i can say energy is equal to some constant times mass raised to the power x and speed of light raised to the power y let's apply the dimensional formula for all these physical quantities so the dimensional formula for energy is m raised to the power 1 l raised to the power 2 and t raised to the power negative 2 now I equate this with, so k doesn't have a dimension, so the dimension of mass is m, so m would be raised to the power x and the dimension of c, c is nothing but the speed, so speed is l raised to the power 1, t raised to the power minus 1, so I'll put a y to this. Now let's simplify this, so I can write this as m raised to the power x, l raised to the power y and t raised to the power negative y and we equate this with m raised to the power 1 l raised to the power 2 and t raised to the power negative 2. Now let's find the exponents. So x would be equal to 1, 2 would be equal to y and negative 2 would be equal to negative y. So from here I can say that value of x would be equal to 1 and value of y would be equal to 2. And finally our relationship would be E is directly proportional to m raised to the power 1 and c raised to the power 2. And you might be familiar with this equation, E equals to mc square. It's a very famous equation by Einstein. So I hope with the help of these two examples, you are now confident about how do we derive the relationship between physical quantities in physical phenomenon. There's a major limitation of this particular application. And that limitation is, like if you carefully see, we had derived E is directly proportional to mc square or I can say E is equal to some constant times mc square. Now, with the help of this application, we are not able to understand or rather we are not able to find the value of this constant k. So, would it be E is equal to mc square? Would it be equal to E is equal to 2mc square? 
would it be equal to e is equal to 2 by 3 mc square we are unaware of that all we can prove with the help of this application is that e is directly proportional to mc square but the value of this constant is still unknown and that's a major limitation of this application i hope you understood this entire video see you in the next video till then bye bye